President Muhammad Buhari insists that he has no anointed candidate to stand as flag bearer of the party, while the northern governors ad are advocating for a southern candidate. And Chairman Abdullahi Adamu had announced Ahmed Lawan as the party's consensus candidate. Sensitive election materials no longer to be kept with the Central Bank of Nigeria, says the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Well, this is Cross Politics. I am Mary Anako. The conflict rocking the All Progressives Congress APC is taking a new turn as 12 northern state governors of the party insisted that the party should pick its presidential candidate from the southern part of the country. This occurred at about the same time the, national, uh, the party's national chairman, Abdullahi Adamu, announced that President Muhammad Buhari had endorsed the Senate president, Ahmed Lawan, as the consensus candidate. The governors restated their position at a meeting with President Muhammad Buhari on Monday. Now, some newspapers had on Saturday reported that President Buhari had accepted the advice of the governors. However, a presidential spokesman, Garba Shehu, issued a statement to the state that the president did not endorse uh, the call for a southern candidate. He stated that Buhari was determined to ensure that there shall be no imposition of any candidate on the party. Well, joining us to discuss this are Professor Chris Mokobia and Dotun Hassan, both are legal practitioners. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. Great. Um, I'm going to start with you, Professor, because um, you obviously can give us um, some insight into what's happening um, within the party. And of course, uh, everybody is literally watching the Eagle Square right now. Um, awaiting Mr. President's um, arrival um, as the ruling party begins its primaries officially tonight. Um, but first and foremost, we've had so many conflicting reports at this moment. The average Nigerian is, is confused as to how um, prepared the All Progressive Congress is for this presidential primaries. Professor, can if you I hear me? To, yes. If we got to clearly... Um, what the party is presently doing at the Eagle Square is waiting for the president to show up and then for the primaries to commence effectively. But there are issues that are dictate not only the delegates, but the teeming Nigerian pullouts of the happenings in the APC. The one is the fact that uh, the speculations that the president at some point had approved the candidacy of the Senate president, and that raised quite a lot of hoopla. And then later the president came out and said that the chairman of the party was on his own, that he wants the party delegates to elect who would fly the party's flag. I want to say clearly that. Uh, the voting is yet to start because the president is not there. I just stepped out of the arena so I can talk with you. Yeah. But what is important to note is that the environment, the atmosphere is peaceful. Its convival is not as um, troubling as people out there would expect. And then there's still a lot of horse trading. Some of the candidates are still talking to others. But what worries and bothers the current part of my mind is the fact that you do not take 100 million from as much as 23% and did not spare enough time to engage with them as the possible withdrawals. Mm. If you've been following the news, Sunday Bakari said clearly that nobody has talked to him about withdrawing from the race. Chen Jack Rich has said that nobody has talked to him about withdrawing from the race. And interestingly, my friend and brother, 
the governor of Kogi State, Governor Yaya Bello, had to insist that his name must be on the ballot. Huh. You do not go to a primary without effectively carrying your members along. It is not fair. The ruling party must correct this going forward. Now, I, I, I'm curious because, um, just as you mentioned, Governor Yaya Belu had a lot to say about, um, you know, all that's been transpiring within the party. And um, a few hours ago, uh, on inquiring, uh, we heard that there were still certain closed-door meetings that were happening, and that's why the primaries had not uh, started in earnest. But I want to ask you, why do you think that there's so much foot dragging and so many mixed information or communication as to what should be the modus operandi or the way forward um, as late as it is in the day uh, concerning the APC? Clearly, this is the ruling party. The interests are high, the structures are effective and formidable. And then you have a party that has about 42 million members. So it is the most populous party in Nigeria. And if you were to unite a party, those just means that if your campaign is effectively managed, you are good and uh, going to win the presidency. So the whole lot of interest. Hmm. But sadly, like I noted, uh, the party leadership should have been able to manage the interests effectively. And uh, like you also noted, which is very important, uh, the conclusion of the public space is not sanitary. You do not uh, wake up to, to say that the president or the party has approved the process of candidates. They will say president when the major interest of the party have not approved that. That's point number one. That's point number two. You do not also need to pull down the number of candidates without effectively engaging all the candidates. Mm. You should be able to get them to proceed like this. So we have to the amended electoral act is provided. You should get them to proceed and consent to so possible withdrawal. And that's why I'm, I, I'm a bit bothered, because listening to Pastor Tunde Bansari, he said clearly that uh, he put the form, and nobody has come to him to tell him why he has to withdraw for a candidate. Jack Creech, the guy from uh, the Niger Delta, he said the same thing. So I, I think that what we must do it's not too late. The convention hasn't started. It's to have the ruling party look at these fundamentals because if things are not done properly, whoever and ladies may have to, it may have a lot of work to do and perhaps be visited with a marriage of litigations in court. Mm. Okay, I'll come back to you on that issue of litigation, but let me go to our second guest. Um, Mr. Hassan, listening to uh, what Professor Wakobia is, has been talking about, being that he's also on the ground uh, in Abuja uh, at the Eagle Square, uh, he's been giving us um, you know, a fair understanding of what's happening. But then before, this, before today, we had seen... Um, Mr. Salih Su, or Salihu, who is a member of the APC, a few days ago writing an open letter um, to the chairman of the party saying that he was taking, um, he was hiding behind Mr. President um, to make his own um, arrangements as opposed to what the National Working Committee uh, had prescribed. And they're saying that he's not listening to you know, the National Working Committee. Um, and now he also went ahead to declare um, that you know, the president had picked somebody as a consensus candidate. Just as I asked the professor, I'm asking you, um, why do you think there's so much confusion within the APC? Um, even though certain pundits had you know, supposedly said that this might actually happen, um, one would have thought that maybe the APC would have been able to put his house in order, but on, unfortunately, this is where we are. And why do you think that is? Well, uh, it's quite uh, 
a very um, confusing state of affairs in the APC as we speak because um, in as much as um, one can be able to deduce that uh, the national chairman is working in concert with Mr. President, uh, it seems Mr. President um, is also hiding behind the fing his own fingers because, uh, you know, at the moment, the uh, as at yesterday, the primaries ought to start as planned. Without much ado, the national chairman threw a jab into the public space that he had already had a consensus from the north in negation of what Mr. President earlier had meeting some few days back, that power should be shipped uh, uh, should go to the south. And um, with all this um, um, confusing state of affairs, it really shows the, in, uh, the, the heightened state of uh, insincerity, uh, lack of internal democracy, uh, how best to treat people with cautious um, um, respect, because uh, for where people have um, expressed their interest, I've been issue. If the party were to be sincere, you know, this is not an accidental decision. I said, Mr. President, you should know that, oh, this is your interest. From day one, you shut out Northern Aspirant from, uh, uh, from purchasing the expression of interest for. Now you allow everybody to purchase 100 million era form. In the, at the middle, at the tail end of the, of, the, of the match, not even before the match, whereby the match has already started because from the one that you purchase the form, you're already campaigning to delegate, you're already moving from state to state. And somebody somewhere will now tell you, no, you can no longer go ahead. It, it seems that um, somebody somewhere is writing a script uh, trying to usurp a process because for me, I just believe um, a succinct, free, and fair primaries uh, in the APC, at least for the first time after uh, President Mohamed Buhari's emergence, because their initial um, um, presidential uh, primaries was just at the formation level. The second term of Mr. President, that was it was an unopposed, so there was no testing of this, uh, no precedence of how to prepare for this kind of a scenario. So, what I will implore is that since Adamu is coming from the PDP, he must have gained the, 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 the real experience to manage the situation like this. But unfortunately, he seems um, lost in the wind of interest. He himself seems to be more told to believe that uh, he has an overbearing interest above all candidates. All members are the same. Either you are vying or you are the habitat. So far you are a member of the APC, you ought to be guided by the constitution of the party. But at this juncture, it seems um, there will be a lot of um, um, uh, uh, confusing um, interest because in as much as the power of the zone to the, to the, to the north, by fiat, by order, it is, it, it did not even go through any any con uh, consultation because when I say consultation, it cannot just be a one-off. Uh, Mr. President, to say, okay, give me the opportunity to choose my my anointed candidate. At the next meeting, you are still giving them another carrot and stick that okay, I want to choose a candidate from the south. And then the following day, that same within the uh, um, 18 hours to that moment, the national chairman declared a consensus for a northern. Uh, uh, aspirant. That on its own uh, is, uh, to me, I'll, 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 I'll say uh, it is inimical, unjustifiable, and illegal in the same society. That chairman ought to have resigned or been hacked and booted out because it shows he's not going to be an unbiased umpire. Okay. He has really proven to be interested in the in the entire process, and I I, I, I believe. Uh, such a person should be asked to, to, to step aside because we cannot believe because this is a ruling party. If okay. anything goes I, wrong I just want, I in just, the manner of approach of the party's primaries of the APC, it's going to affect all of us as Nigerians. So we need somebody to take the chairman um, for a more tutor.
One now, more tutorial on political organizers. Now, quote, organizer quoting, political quoting Professor Wokobi, he did talk about the fact that there's still a few hours to address this issue in house uh, before the primaries in itself begins. Um, it's too late. Well, you, you late. just took the question. You, 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 <laughs> I don't see. You cannot, you cannot manage a whole nation like Nigeria under fire brigade approach. We are too important. I neck, I neck date is uh, sacrosanct. If anything goes into a mess today, the APC will not present the presidential candidate. Take it to the, take it to the bank. The same scenario that happened in Zamfara will repeat itself in the APC because they would, they would, they would definitely fall uh, uh, short of meeting up with a time being said by INEC. With all these shenanigans going on, no process, no uh, 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 well uh, presented um, uh, uh, delegate list. There are different scenarios of governor's list, the chairman's list. This is not democracy. Where democracy ought to be, everybody should be given the same way PDP uh, throw their, part, uh, uh, their, their party uh, aspirants open. They should have allowed all aspirants into the game, not shutting out some people. It is undemocratic. I would have preferred both the North and the South, even if it is the party uh, 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 um, agreement, but it is not written that there should be rotation of power between South and, and, and North. But in as much as it is unwritten, and a lot of decisions that have been uh, um, uh, running um, uh, within the party, we will implore Mr. President to take the bull by the horn. But, He's the national but, leader of the party. But the APC... He should take responsibility I'm sorry, Mr. Hassan. In the APC, we've seen that majority of the guys who are running for this office are mostly southerners. So, I mean, I'm guessing that that's why the party seems to be tilting in that direction because we've seen so many southerners, whether they be from the south, south, the southeast, or the southwest, they're mostly southerners. Uh, and that's no, why, and, it, and it maybe... Is not yet southerners. It is not yet southerners. You can see we, we still have uh, the Senate president and Governor Yaya Bello. Well, well, in the well those, they're it just two. Um, and, I said, I, and I said, the majority of the people who are running for yes, that office yes. are southerners. And I'm saying maybe yes. this is why the party is going in that direction. But let me go back to Professor Wokobia, who is on the ground at the Eagle Square, who stepped out to speak with us. Now, Professor Wokobia, you heard uh, by Sir Dotson Hassan, who's saying it's too late in the day to, for the party to do anything to remedy this situation. But again, in the interest of nationhood and, of course, internal democracy, there has to be a rallying point of some, uh, of some sort. Uh, whether 100 million or not, somebody will have to step down for another, and there has to be um, a rallying point of sorts. Do you see that happening anytime soon, or do you see a chaotic situation compared to what the PDP had when they had their convention? My name is Kulipa, and only sounded like an activist. He hasn't sounded like a lawyer. Uh, he has sounded like an activist and a lawyer. He also sounded like a politician. The truth is that we're politicians. Can you hear me well? I can hear you loud and clear. The truth is that we're politicians. There's a lot that can be done in a matter of hours. Uh, the party, as it were, can go into a closed door meeting with the aspirants and then have them, in compliance with the provision of the amended electoral act, consist to withdrawing from the race. A lot can happen in the next one hour. But the point, like I noted, is that things can be done better than presently. We, we have candidates who ask for who bought their phones well over two weeks, three weeks, four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. so, uh, the party had enough time to attend to these issues. Unfortunately, uh, people with our dear party, the APC, they waited until this bad moment. But can it be resolved? The answer is the capital of the yes. Hmm. Can they get the aspirants to withdraw for a few other, one or two or three of them? The answer is yes. Can they get them to do so politely? The answer is also yes. That's the way with politicians. But I hope and pray that going forward, we'll learn to do things better. 
and we learn to be more programmatic and less uh, rancorous in the way we deal with uh, issues of politics. Now, let's talk about um, sudden big wigs within the party. Now, there have been rumors uh, that um, the vice president might come under pressure. Um, I, in fact, I, I watched the Lagos State governor being questioned about where his um, loyalties lie tonight, being that um, he has um, two people who are from uh, Lagos State, uh, you know, on that particular ballot, um, the former governor um, and um, the leader of the APC, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and of course, uh, Vice President Jamie Shibanjo, who also has been, um, you know, um, the Attorney General of Lagos State and now the Vice President of the country. Um, and he, he, for him, he, he danced around the topic, you know, and, and people are asking, who's going to step down for who? And some would say that um, the Vice President might uh, bow to pressure, being that the former governor, uh, allegedly or reportedly is his godfather, even though that has been contested by both parties. But what do you see happening in the case of these two men uh, who we would um, suggesting, uh, suggestedly call bigwigs within the party? Uh, do you see one stepping down for the other? And who would the step-down person be? If you ask me my opinion as a stakeholder of the party, I would say that... Um, Frankly, I would rather that Bola Tinubu withdraws from the contest and allow the vice president. Why? Uh, my reasons are profound. Um, Bola Tinubu, as he to himself, is practically too old, weary, and tired for the enormous responsibility of fixing, resetting, and reworking Nigeria. And that is why it becomes very difficult for the supporters of the vice president to make him step down. The truth is that from the southwest, uh, the candidacy of the vice president is more attractive to people across the nation. Uh, beyond the fact that as you are the political figure and the phenomenon, we're looking at how we can defeat the PDP as the polls. Uh and if you put out the candidacy of the Bola Mitchell, he will be an easy runover by Tikwa Huwaka because they are the same generation. Uh, but I think we have better spread of coordination. But many would if say, you, but many would say, I'm sorry, Professor, many would say this about the president who's sitting today. Many said the same thing about him. He was ailing, he was not fit, he was not as strong as, you know, again, Vice President, former Vice President Atikwa Bubaka, but hey, he did win, and he is our president. He's been, he's done two terms. He's almost about to come to an end uh, of, of the, his second term. So why would yeah, Asiwa do yeah. be put on that table again of saying, oh, he's too uh, old, uh, he's too tired? Let me put the issue in the proper perspective. Atiku Abubakar ran against an incumbent president. Um, so it was very difficult for an Atiku Abubakar to take an incumbent, the sitting president, to the plenary. In 2023, we will not have President Mohamed Buhari in the Bible. We will have two outsiders running for the race. Mm -hmm. And then the issue will be clearly uh, uh, between the competency, the capacity, and the appeal of an Atiku Abubakar against an Asiwaji Bola Mentinewu. I am a member of the APC, and I say without equivocation that it will be easier for an article to beat a Tinubu than it will be for an article to beat the vice president. And the reasons are simple. The vice president comes with an amazing credential, he's younger, he's shown capacity, he's not only very intelligent, he's amiable. And you're not dealing with uh, the same generational challenge. You're dealing with someone who will tell Nigerians that they will think out of the box. Hmm. And then you're talking about a candidate who's already in power, who will not need so much time to hit the ground running. And that is not to say that I am in support of the candidacy 
I, I was about to say that you, you seem to be on the side of the vice president. Could that be who you'd be voting for? No, I have this question here. You, uh, your question was about uh, a tickle, uh, was about the parliament to and then the vice president. Yes. If you were to ask me where my sympathy lies, I think without a convocation, that I'm pro youth. I'm pro an outright generational change. I'm pro in Nigeria where you have new ideas against old ideas. And that is why I, without doubt, supported the candidacy of my brother and friend, Governor Ayabari. He has performed the best of all the governors in this country in the area of security. Really? And the greatest challenge facing our country is that of security. He is also the governor who has shown capacity in terms of youth engagement in government. He has the youngest cabinet and is effectively pursuing uh, new tendencies in leadership. And then regarding women inclusion in government, outside the country called Rwanda in Africa, he has the highest number of women in government. Yeah. He has met the 35% United Nations uh, NDG goals and the affirmative action. Okay. And so I am for a higher value presidency. Okay. But oh. dispassionately, I would say that between Bola Tinubu and the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, if anybody should step down for the other, it should be Bola Tinubu stepping down for the game. Okay. Let me come back to you, um, Dotson. Uh, interestingly, um, Professor Wakobia is saying that he'd rather the Vice President over... Oh, I think we lost Dotson Hassan, unfortunately. Um, we'll try to get him back on the line. All right. Well, um, Professor Wakobi, I think I'm just going to quickly ask you this question before we wrap up because time is not on our side. Um, how soon do you think that this event will start now that we are, seem to be at, uh, you know, at a deadlock of sorts and the still closed door meeting is happening? Will this be running into the early hours of the morning from the look of things? Like I said... With politicians, so much can happen in one hour. I don't see deadlock. I know that the all progressive Congress, the APC, will be able to resolve these contradictions and perhaps come out with a candidate before money. Uh, what is important is that, like every Nigerian, I pray that the party. I think we lost uh, that. Uh, connection with Professor Wakobia. So quickly, um, Dawson has... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Professor, go ahead. Quickly, we lost you for a second. Because like every Nigerian, I want a new tendency in leadership. I want a new generation of thinkers in government. And so I am opposed to the Atiku Abubakar ticket of the PDP. I want something new and something different for our country. Okay. So I hope the APC gets it right. Okay. All right. Finally, Dutton, we lost you for a, a long time. So now that you're back to wrap up this conversation, who do you see the headliners, the frontliners rather, uh, being at the end of the day, if and when the APC is able to address this issue and arrive at some form of um, a conclusion or compromise? Do you see, um, I mean, looking at all of the people who are, you know, um, going to be running tonight for that particular flag. Um, do you see the Southwest, the South-South, uh, or even a Northerner emerging? Who do you think stands a better chance tonight? Well, I believe um, I must give kudos to uh, Ababisi Akonde's uh, magnanimity for working on bringing the south, south Southwest of the Southwest leaders together to come up with a with a unanimous uh, um, consensus, but uh, quite uh, regrettably, almost everybody seems to have been ambitioned to be the next president. And uh, in a context like this, just like the way we must look at uh, what Honorable uh, Tambua did uh, to step in down for um, for Mr. Atiku Abubaka uh, at the PDP, this is politics. Politics. Um, it's, uh, it's an overbearing, it has an overbearing interest on um, one, they, as an individual, 
from the section of that country and the entire nation as a whole. At this point in time, I would have uh, preferred all candidates uh, have that last minute uh, resolution. But for me, uh, in, a, in, a, in a way, I would have believed that in this kind of situation, yes, Ashura Jibola has mentioned who has really tried, yes, he built the party, he contributed immensely uh, for the emergence of uh, Mr. President. Uh, who we believe deserves to be compensated. But politics does not go that way. Huh. We look at the scenario and the series that are involved. Um, the vice president, to me, um, should have been given that uh, honor, being the next line in that office. He has been in that office for the past seven years. Coming into that office uh, requires a whole lot of um, learning. So not that is the best of all, but I'm, I'm so sure that if there are rallying points, uh, we can look in that direction. Okay. But that doesn't mean that um, no politics cannot be decided on the field. So on the field of play, uh, interest surpasses uh, every other issue. Well, but we I love uh, Ashwaju and I love the Vice President to come in as a friend, not as an enemy after okay. after at the end of this entire process so, All right. so that there will not be more animity at the end of the day in Canada. Well, our eyes are fixed uh, at the Eagle Square tonight. We'll be watching and bringing updates as, uh, you know, the situation unfolds. But I want to say thank you, Professor Chris Mokobia, Dotton Hassan, both legal practitioners. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Well, joining us uh, to discuss later on INEX decision uh, to move a sensitive um, election materials away from the Central Bank of Nigeria is going to be next on our discussion. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.